a young man in his prime who had a small truck that he used for work and traveled to several provinces. He always traveled at night. One day, he told his mother that he would be traveling as usual. His mother prepared food for him and placed it in a tightly closed container, bid him farewell and wished him safety. The young man got into the truck, closed the door, checked the lights and checked the amount of fuel. He took the key, started the truck, and set off. The young man didn't intend to take anyone with him, but fortunately, it was his mother's prayers and wishes that kept him safe. He called his friend and told him that he wanted to go. However, the young man initially hesitated and feared that his friend would be exhausted during the long journey, because the road takes at least seven or eight hours. But with his friend's insistence, the young man agreed and took his friend with him soon after a not so long distance. The young man stopped at a nearby gas station. He refueled his truck and bought two cups of coffee for himself and his friend, along with a small water bottle. They set off again, and the time was around 10.45 p.m. The night was clear, with stars lighting up the long road. The truck's engine was loud, and a chilly breeze swept through. It was a particularly wintry night, and the road was deserted. Even cars were rarely seen, and only an occasional car or bus passed by. Dry weeds on the sides of the road swayed in the cold wind. The sound of the truck's worn-out radio played in the background, blending with the freezing cold, the aroma of bitter coffee, a few shared cigarettes, and the scent of gasoline. They continued along the road, talking about their everyday lives and their adventures in traveling. The time passed, and it was now 12.34, am well past midnight. The road was dark, almost invisible if it weren't for the truck's headlights in the distance. The truck came to a halt. What's the matter? The young man opened the door and stepped out to inspect it. He lifted the hood and a little smoke emerged. The engine temperature had risen without apparent reason. He returned to his truck and informed his friend about the engine's condition. His friend also got out to check it with him and confirmed that the gas tank was full so this shouldn't have been an issue. They tried starting it again and attempted to lower the engine temperature, but it was in vain. The air was getting colder. They made a third, fourth, and fifth attempt, but the truck wouldn't start. They decided to spend the night there. They turned on the truck's heater for warmth and waited, hoping that someone would come and help them. An entire hour passed during which they talked about their lives and shared numerous stories on this desolate road with only the dim light of the truck illuminating their surroundings. A young girl, dressed in white, suddenly startles them by swiftly crossing the road. She runs to the left, heading towards a lower area off the road. Can you imagine the fear in that moment? The young man? Did you see what I saw? His friend? Oh yeah, I saw it too. But who is she? The young man? I don't know. Let's check it out. They both get out of the truck, shivering from the cold and fear gripping their insides. The young man advances towards the direction of the little girl, but his friend advises him not to go. However, curiosity nearly overwhelms the young man, and he wants to know who the girl is. A small bush obstructs their view. The young man carefully observes from behind the bush and glimpses a huge tent in the distance with a blazing fire. In an instant, they hear the sound of drums beating and lively singing as if it were a wedding celebration. The young man turns to his friend and whispers, maybe they can help us. Come, let's see. His friend approaches and looks from a distance. The friend agrees, and they decide to approach the group and seek assistance. They return to the truck, close the door, and head toward the gathering to ask for help. They return to the truck, close the door, and went to seek help. As they approached the tent, they observed a group of peculiar individuals, dressed in clothing that seemed to belong to an ancient era. The young men paid little attention to their attire, assuming they were nomadic travelers. The group was dancing wildly and frenziedly. They greeted them, and everyone suddenly stopped like statues, staring at them. One of them, an elderly man with numerous wrinkles on his face, sharp green eyes that shone like light, approached them and said, Welcome. Come to the tent and we will provide you with food if you're hungry. The young man, we don't need food. I need you to help me fix my truck. It broke down. Please, the man, please come to the tent, and we will provide you with food. The young man, thank you, but I'm in a hurry, sir. Could you please help us? The man, come to the tent, 
and we will provide you with food. The young man. All right, since you insist, they entered the tent after the strange man's persistence. They were served milk and a meal consisting of only meat. The group continued their frenzied dancing. Everyone exited the tent, and the two friends remained inside, eating and drinking until they were full. There was a little milk left in the container, which the young man didn't finish. After the heavy meal, they lay down, but suddenly everyone seemed to fall asleep. The singing and dancing stopped. The friend got up and found that the remaining milk in the container had turned into blood. He was seized with shock and told the young man about it. They both saw the milk had transformed into blood. They rushed out in horror, but to their surprise, everyone had vanished in the blink of an eye as if no one had ever been there before. They looked back, and the tent had also disappeared. It was as if no one had been there at all. Everything had vanished in the blink of an eye. Terrified, they ran back to the truck. Within minutes, the Good Samaritan arrived, helped them, and they left. It's a scary true story that happened last summer, during my summer vacation. I took advantage of the summer break to get my driver's license at a camp and decided to go on a solo road trip for practice. I love mountains, so after getting off the highway, I leisurely drove along a mountain road. However, the road was quite complicated, and I ended up getting lost. I had a GPS, but it either didn't work well in the rural area, or the maps were outdated, as it didn't display the roads properly. I found myself lost deep in the mountains. Realizing this was a problem, I decided to turn back on the road I came from. But as I was driving back, about ten minutes into it, I suddenly felt a strong impact as if something had hit the front of my car. I wondered if I had accidentally run over a small animal, so I stopped the car and got out to check. However, I didn't see anything unusual, and there were no dents or signs of a collision. Although I was concerned since everything seemed fine, I continued my journey. However, after that, I couldn't shake the eerie feeling that someone was watching me through the front windshield while I was driving. Looking back now, I even faintly recall hearing laughter. I also felt like my car was moving unusually slow. At that time, I was worried that the earlier unexplained impact might have caused some car trouble, so I didn't pay too much attention to it. Eventually, I made it through the mountains safely, and there were no issues with my car. It was late by the time I got back home, so I went straight to bed since I was exhausted. A few days later, I couldn't stop thinking about the unexplained impact, so I checked my dashcam footage. To my astonishment, just before the impact, there was a woman on the road who shouldn't have been there. She was tall, had long hair, wore a white dress, had red eyes, and her mouth was dripping with blood. She was covered in wounds. What's even more chilling is that after the collision, she was seen clinging to the front windshield of my car while laughing. However, as soon as I exited the mountain road, she disappeared. This was so horrifying that I immediately sought the help of a reputable psychic to perform a purification ceremony. Fortunately, I wasn't possessed by her, and it was considered a temporary paranormal occurrence. I recall hearing a similar story about a haunted place where such incidents occurred about ten years ago. It was a quiet night. The sky was cloudless, adorned with an endless number of stars shining brighter than ever before. The moon also appeared radiant. I was listening to the radio on my way to Rock Springs in Pinion County. I drove for a few hours straight, and when midnight approached, I pulled over by the side of the road to stretch my legs for a while. After standing there for a bit, I heard loud noises coming from the direction of the mountain. I went back to my car, grabbed my hunting rifle that I had with me, and then went to see where those noises were coming from. It seemed to me that I heard the sound of a woman screaming about 40 meters away. When I reached the source of the sound, I witnessed a horrifying scene. I found a man dead on the spot, and as I approached him, I saw that he was a young man no older than 17. The victim had been shot in the head with precision, and the woman was also dead. It appeared that they had found no one to help them in that remote location. I retreated to my car, feeling a mixture of sadness and fear. Then I drove away and continued my journey. After about two hours, I saw a man standing by the side of the road moving his fingers in a strange manner. I kept driving, but his image was reflected in the car's mirror, revealing that he was the same person I had seen earlier. At that moment, I couldn't think, 
so I pressed the gas pedal hard and sped away without knowing what was happening. After walking 200 kilometers, a bird damaged the car's control system. I managed to open the car door and quickly exit, after colliding with it from the inside, my bleeding face trying to find someone to help me. I heard footsteps coming from the mountainside, so I rushed towards my car, which had stopped after several crashes. I retrieved the gun once more, prepared to shoot anyone who approached me with a single bullet. Just as I anxiously awaited the appearance of anyone, that man, who seemed like a madman, emerged, holding a knife in his hand, his head adorned with some scars. The madman stared at me strangely, then said, I'm going to kill you. I tried to keep the knife away from me, but I screamed when I felt it pierce my left arm. I couldn't fight back. I tried to stand my ground until I could break free from him. However, before I could escape, I shot him in the chest, rendering him immobile. I moved away until I reached my car, and I took out a pen and the notebook in which I write some of my feelings and thoughts. And th that moment, I wrote, I don't have any more time. Just tell my children and my wife that I love them very much. Ask them to forgive me because I won't be able to return home this week. After several days, the police found the car overturned on one of its sides, and beside it, the driver lay in a decomposed state. Next to him, they discovered the gun submerged in a pool of blood, with no trace of any other person. Thank you for watching the video until the end. We value your interaction and feedback, so feel free to share your opinions and thoughts with us below. We are excited to hear what you have in mind and look forward to staying in touch with you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and activate the bell button to receive our latest content and share the video with your friends so that together we can build our community on social media platforms. Thanks again and have a nice day.